Greetings to you. It's good to be back with you for uh, worship uh, this day. It's the uh, sixth Sunday of Easter now. Uh, today's worship broadcast on WXRL and our, our video uh, worship is sponsored by Grace and Mike Stever in celebration of their 27th wedding anniversary and in honor of uh, the May anniversaries of both sets of their parents, uh, Glenn and uh, Patricia Stever and Edward and Lorraine Friedrich. So to uh, you, Grace and Mike, happy anniversary and uh, what a remarkable uh, remembrance of your parents uh, on their uh, anniversary occasion as well. We'll begin today with our opening litany. We celebrate the life Christ came to bring when he rose from the dead. Alleluia, live with us, risen Lord. We celebrate today the life Christ will continue to send, send us through his spirit. Alleluia, come Holy Spirit. We celebrate the life that we live together with our God because of what Christ did for us. Alleluia, come God the Father. We celebrate the life yet to come which Christ has promised to share with us. Alleluia, let us look up to heaven with hope. We celebrate the life of the past, the life of the present, and the life of the future, all gifts from Christ himself. Alleluia, let us rejoice in the Lord of the living. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake he forgives us of all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of the Word, I therefore forgive you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you good behavior in Christ might be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through the water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. 
It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our appointed psalm for today is from Psalm 66, verses 8 through 20. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our back. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you, vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Our final reading is from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Having heard God's word, We confess our faith together now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join now together in singing, The Lord my God be praised. If you have a hymnal at home, that's hymn number 174.
highest heavenly hood. Oh, Lord, my God, be praised, my hope, my light from heaven. The Spirit, hope, the Son, in love to me has given. His grace revives my heart and gives my spirit power, help, comfort, and support in sorrow's gloomy hour. Oh, Lord, my God, be praised, my God, the ever-living, to whom the heavenly host their Lord and praise are given. God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. Hey, dear friends, in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that I chose for the sermon today is taken from St. John's Gospel, the 14th chapter particularly verses 15 through 21. You know, I think that there are all different kinds of ways that in life we can feel a bit abandoned, deserted, alone, or forsaken. As I thought about it, perhaps that time for you and me might be a time when we're far away from our families, isolated and to ourselves, in some regards, kind of like what we're experiencing now with the isolation due to this virus. But then there are those other circumstances when difficult circumstances in life seem just to be continual, one thing after another. We can't seem to catch our breath, and so we cry out. But sometimes it doesn't feel as if anyone is listening. When addiction or depression or abuse prevalent in the life of someone we love, they're out of our contact, out of our reach, or distant, or clouded. Or maybe we feel isolated, alone, fearful, anxious, when the doctor says cancer. Or when death is there. When death shows its ugly face. Or when we consider the untimely death of a spouse or a loved one. What comes to your mind when you think of times in your life when you felt abandoned or alone? You know, the thought of being isolated or being alone, the thought of being empty, maybe even neglected, can so easily trigger in us emotions of anxiety, fear. The truth is, nobody, nobody wants to experience the effects of isolation or emptiness. And yet how we can, unfortunately, relate. And you know, I think the disciples knew it well, too. If you remember from the gospel for today that I read for you, we find ourselves at a time when Jesus was prepping to die for the sins of the world. Now, of course, Jesus had been with the disciples. He, he was a constant companion to them and a confidant, a friend, a teacher. And so as the disciples come to hear these words, the thought of his departure, well, that was enough to trigger, I suppose, the kinds of feelings that come with loneliness, anxiety, and fear. 
And I'm sure grief was theirs too. What was life going to look like? So much of what they knew would be gone. But here's the thing. Here's the hope. It's in these moments of sadness, if you will. It's in these moments of fear and worry, anticipated isolation and loneliness that Jesus gives to the disciples his word and a promise. You see, he promised to them that they wouldn't be abandoned. They wouldn't be without him. They would never be without his love, without his support. He's always with them. That's his promise. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. He's always there. And for those disciples, not only that, he would give to them a helper. Here's what Jesus said. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The Spirit, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. You see, my friends, in their time of fear, in their time of worry, and perhaps separation, anxiety, Jesus promises that he's not abandoning them or anyone he loves. He would be with them. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would be with them too. He would be with them too as a a defender, a comforter, a shield who is on their side working for them, supporting them, and pointing them in the right direction, helping them to to see and to believe in Jesus always before them, to see his promises, to know his word of truth, and to know the comfort of his love in all the circumstances of life and ministry. That's the promise he gave And that's the promise he gives to you and me too. My friends, our hope is that Jesus was with us and he too gives us the Holy Spirit, our helper, the one who enables you and me to believe and cling to our faith, especially in those trying times. You see, apart from the Spirit, you and me, well, I suppose we would go on our own way, explore all different kinds of options for relief of our fears, our loneliness, our anxiety. But with the Spirit, our helper, we're pointing to the way, the only way, our only hope in Christ The Holy Spirit, our our comforter, is with us, given to you and me. It's the one who comforts us with a word of truth, a word that reminds you and me that we're never, ever alone. You see, Jesus died and rose for you and me so that we might forever be connected to him as his forgiven and redeemed children. The Spirit gives to you and me the the word of truth, a word of truth that says to you and me when we feel isolated, there he is, our constant companion, our friend, always by our side, loving us, supporting us, walking with us. A word of truth that says when we isolate ourselves out of shame, There is our Jesus, our Redeemer, our King, ready to forgive us, ready to restore us to himself and to one another. And a word of truth that says to you and me when when we're weak, when we're afraid, there is our God, our refuge and strength, 
our very present help in trouble. My friends, our God is indeed our refuge and strength. And in the Spirit's power, you and me are given the strength and we're guided through this life. Empowered by the Spirit, we can be a people who face our days with joy and hope and confidence in the life that comes from living as a redeemed child of the resurrected Jesus. It's in the Spirit's power that you and I are able to face our everyday hopefully and renewed, assured of God's ever-present presence and love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time we worship our Lord with the offering. Uh, as I have been saying over these last number of weeks, I want to thank all of you for your continued support, for the offerings that continue to come in week after week. How blessed we are. We worship our Lord now with his offering. By your Son's presence among us, you have raised us up, O God, raised us up to new life, holy life, joyful life. And so we raise our hearts to you along with these gifts. Accept them as a sign of our love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our prayers this week, we include Tony Chapman's uh, mother, Stella, uh, who has recently been diagnosed with the coronavirus. Stella is 98 years old, uh, so please, uh, please keep Stella in your, your prayers. But also, if you would, keep Tony and the rest of the family in your prayers as, of course, as you can imagine, these are anxious moments for them. Uh, may all of them know the peace and the hope that comes from Christ's presence and promises. We say a word of prayer for Karen Zeeland and her family as they mourn the death of Karen's brother, Don Kruger, this past week. May their hearts be comforted in God's promise of life forever with him. And also, we say a word of prayer for Hope Obertine and her family as they mourn the death of Hope's dad, Donald Stoutrick. Uh, Donald uh, was, uh, became uh, a regular uh, Saturday worship, worshiper here at St. John's uh, for uh, maybe the last three years or so. Uh, and so our prayers go out to hope. We give thanks to God for Don and his presence here at, at St. John's over the years. Um, but we also rejoice in the new life that he has as one of God's saints. And lastly, we say a special word of prayer for Greg Yasko, who is having some health issues. Uh, so Greg, our prayers are with you. Uh, God's presence and healing would be with you. We pray. For the faithful proclamation of Jesus Christ to those who do not know him, that through hearing the word of the Lord, many may be brought to faith and to the knowledge of the truth. For the church of God here and everywhere, that all who confess Jesus Christ may be united in doctrine and witness, defended against all the assaults of the enemy, that all may eagerly await with hopeful anticipation that time when we can come together in person again around your word and sacrament and love for one another. For St. John's, for the work of the kingdom in our community, 
for the resources to accomplish all that God desires, that his name may be glorified among us and his purpose fulfilled in our words and our works. For the agencies and institutions through which we love our neighbor and provide for those in need, for the destitute and homeless, and for everyone who suffers unemployment and underemployment, that we may aid them in their need and assist them in whatever way we can. For the lonely who suffer the burdens of life without friendship or family, for those depressed or weary of pandemic measures, and for the fellowship of the church, that we may bear one another's burdens, be Christ's presence for one another, and assure all of those around us that we are never, ever alone. For the sick, for those who suffer, for those who grieve, we pray today for Stella, for Tony and her family, for Karen, her family, for Hope, and for Greg that God would grant healing to their bodies, peace for their minds, and consolation in their grief and sorrows. For love of godly things, that we may delight in God's word and walk in his ways, and for the spirit, that we may be led into the truth and kept in peace. For the nation, for those who lead our nation, for the end of the pandemic, for peace among nations, and for an end of terror and violence, that we may work for the common good so that justice may prevail, life be protected, and truth abound. O Lord our God, as we recall the obedient life and life-giving death of your Son for our salvation, we pray you to strengthen our faith and to make our hearts bold that we may not fear, but address our prayers to you in all humility. Hear us on behalf of Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, who even now stands before you and on our behalf, pleading our cause with his own blood until that day when we are delivered from the changes and chances of this mortal life, only to stand before you in heaven. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together now as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings again, everyone. Good to, uh, good to worship with you. How blessed we are to, to worship. Uh, maybe not worshiping in, in person, but uh, certainly united in the Spirit's power as we're drawn to the word of truth, which brings comfort to our hearts. Uh, thanks for, for worshiping today. 
Uh, again, a very special thanks to Grace and Mike Stever for, for sponsoring our, our broadcast uh, uh, video and, and radio broadcast today. Uh, what a blessing. Happy anniversary to both of you guys uh, and to uh, many, many more. On the announcement end of things, just a quick uh, couple remarks. Um, this, this coming Saturday um, is uh, our uh, collection uh, of uh, or the plant sale. Uh, you can come and pick up your, your plants from uh, the plant sale if you, you place an order. Um, so that's this Saturday uh, from 9.30 to 11.30. Uh, you should have received a, a letter in the mail if you did place an order, kind of giving you some direction on how things are going to, on how things are going to be handed and how those flowers will be distributed to you. So again, between the hours of 9.30 a.m. and 11.30 this coming Saturday. Uh, the only other thing I, I would like to, to highlight once again uh, is our up-and-coming uh, Pentecost celebration. Pentecost this year is on Sunday, May 31st. Now normally uh, that would be the day of, of confirmation, um, but unfortunately due the, to the circumstances, um, we can't be together in worship in this place. However, what we'd like to do that day um, is just kind of celebrate Pentecost, the, the, the birthday of the church. Uh, and so uh, we're going to we're going to come together uh, on the 31st. You come to the church in, in your vehicles, uh, and um, we'll just kind of have a, a little parade. Uh, and as we as we do that, um, as you pass through the church, we'll have you stop quickly uh, to receive a, a few uh, communication items. Um, but also, uh, there's some gifts that will be given to the Sunday school and, and thankfulness to the, the kids in the, in the Sunday school year. And also, we would like uh, to be able to um, give every family that comes through uh, geranium. Uh, as our tradition is to decorate the, the chancel behind me with geraniums for Pentecost, uh, we'd like to keep, keep that tradition alive uh, by giving each of you a geranium that you can plant at your home. Uh, so again, that's May 31st, so just mark that on your calendar and uh, stay tuned for more details on that. Uh, I'll make sure that uh, as each week progresses, I give you a, a little bit more information on that. But for now, if you would, mark your calendar. Uh, that that um, event that day will begin at, uh, at 9 o'clock, so uh, just make note of that. I think that's all for now. Uh, have a blessed week, everyone. Uh, and I look forward to worshiping with you again uh, next week. God's peace.